get this started again, and I'm going to introduce two speakers. It's a dual presentation. Um, the first gentleman I've known for a long time, actually, he um, works for the Department of Transportation, and uh, being my construction background, I worked with Derek probably going back 20 years. He, um, his name's Derek Brown. He's a 27-year veteran of the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Started as a construction inspector in 1989 and transferred to the Connecticut DOT section in uh, 1996. The utility section acts as a liaison between the highway designers and utility companies that have facilities within the limits of the proposed highway projects. And he's worked on some major projects, and this is where I've worked with him on uh, in, in New Haven on the main interchange project there. There was lots of impacts to many utilities. He um, helped us uh, rebuild our twin 48-barrel uh, force main across Quinnipiac River directional drill. That was a $20 million project um, and helped coordinate that. Uh, he's involved in all those utility relocations for I-84, so you can ask him all kinds of questions about that project. I'm sure he'd be appreciative of that. And uh, he's, he's uh, had some advanced relocations of it, even the 10 million gallon a day um, sanitary sewer pump station at Harpers Ferry mm. Road. Complex project, complex area. Um, he's has served on the Connecticut DOT representative on the Call Before You Dig Board of Directors for the past six years. He's currently the Vice President of Damage Prevention and Education for uh, uh, Call Before You Dig. And uh, as a cherry on top, Derek's has served as um, WPCA Board of Directors in Prospect, Connecticut for 10 years. So he really fits this better than I even knew. And um, Derek introduced me to Nick Holly, who's been working with Call Before You Dig on the, um, on the you know, and, and they'll talk about that and the efficiencies of, that they're providing for Call Before You Dig. Um, Nick Holly is a senior project manager with Pelican Corporation. He has over 18 uh, years working in the GIS profession. For the past 15 years, he has focused entirely on underground utility damage prevention industri uh, industry in Australia, Singapore, U.S., and Canada. Nick lives in Connecticut, in Connecticut and was project manager for the system upgrades to Call Before You Dig and is also um, assisting us in New Haven for um, our project, for our notification project. So this presentation, although from the title of it, and this is it's hard to say, is protecting essential sewer infrastructure by improving internal external communication. This really gets down to you know, safety, operational uh, efficiencies, GIS applications, and and basically, in, in, in New Haven's case, fiscal um, efficiency. So, um, introduce these guys and hope you enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I just want to thank Tom for inviting us today. Uh, this is definitely a good fit, good opportunity for uh, Call Before You Dig to come out and do a, a brief presentation. Um, like he said, Nick is going to do a little presentation about what um, his company has done to help out Greater New Haven WPCA. So um, with that, we'll get started here. So um, the mission statement for Call Before You Dig is to provide communication and education to improve safety when excavating. Um, so how do you do that? <clears throat> well, we have a board of directors, Call Before You Dig, for those that don't know, we have 20 voting members, and those members represent various utilities across the state of Connecticut. In addition to that, we have associate members from the Public Utility Regulatory Authority, which is part of DEEP. We have our vendor sits on the board, which is Pelican Corp, as an associate member. We have associate members from the insurance industry, public safety, contractors associations. So all these stakeholders, you know, help us keep our mission and keep on goal. So. One of the things I want to ask everybody to do, in case you don't know about the regulations and statutes that uh, affect Call Before You Dig, is please go to our website, www.cbyd.com. It's very important that uh, you all get a better understanding of Call Before You Dig and, and your role in it. So I mentioned that we have a vendor in Pelican Corp. And with our vendor and our board back in 2015, we said, you know, how do we maintain our, our mission and our goal? Um, luckily, Call Before You Dig in Connecticut has a pretty good reputation nationwide uh, for maintaining low damage rate of utilities. 
So we don't want to rest on our laurels. You know, we started looking around. We're not happy with the um, technology we're using. We're using the internet for uh, electronic tickets, but we said there's a lot of room for improvement, and how do we do that? So we got together off-site. We had a strategic planning session, and we brought all the stakeholders together. It was a two-day event, and uh, we came up with the following list. You know, we said we wanted to be a leader in damage prevention. We wanted to maintain that. We needed to strengthen our focus on technology and education. And, you know, how do you get there? So you need more committees, right? So we formed the technology committee. And that technology committee had various people uh, sitting on the, on the committee. We had contractors in the room. We had various utilities in the room. Our vendor was in the room. And we said, you know, how do we move forward? How do we improve our technology? We need to step it up. So, you know, we, had, we said that the new service has to, you know, survive the future. We wanted to focus on online and mobile usage. You know, we said that um, we already had the e-ticket system, but it was somewhat archaic by today's standards of technology. So we wanted a system that someone could use their smartphone, they could be right on the location, and they could use GPS and say, this is where I'm going to be digging. So we wanted a system that could do that. We wanted to improve the communication with contractors. What is called before you dig's major function? We are the connection. You know, we provide the connection between contractors and utility companies. We wanted a low impact to our membership. So in other words, we, we roll out a new system, new electronic system. Everybody receives these tickets electronically. We can't crash their system. We can't make them go out and buy all new software on their, on their end. They got to integrate it, you know, with what, how their budget allows. We're all, we all know about budget constraints. So the, um, we want to improve the tickets without major, being a major impact. The other goal we have is to remove fax tickets. Believe it or not, we still have to fax tickets out, and maybe some of you are, are these people, that uh, we still have to physically fax a ticket to look for a locate request out to some municipalities and some utilities. <coughs> And it, it's very labor intensive and costly. And you know, we said everybody's got email. We need we need to move on. We need to eliminate the fax. So in uh, we implemented this new system in January of 2016. I, you know, thinking back, I, I'm pretty impressed we pulled that off because you know we did the strategic planning in uh, early 2015, and in less than a year we had the new system up and running. So I hope everybody's experienced that new system. So <clears throat> what did the improvements improve? Um, you know, our call center changed because now we're, our focus is less on uh, phone calls and more on the electronic ticket. Before the new system was rolled out, I think it was less than 30% of our ticket volume was by e-ticket. So most of our tickets were being phoned in. And we said, you know, we got to improve the electronic communication. So now that um, our ticket volume goes up every year, but it's gonna change the role a little bit of the operators in the call center. They're doing a lot more education to the people on the phone that do call in and, and tell them, you know, we got a new system and we wanna help you learn how to use it and everything. So, <clears throat> like I said, we're, um, we're pushing the new web e-ticket and the mobile application. People have tablets and smartphones out in the field. We want, you know, the new system is capable of interacting with that. So on the screen here, you see the different examples of the new system. And one of the greatest tools, in my opinion, <clears throat> is over on the right. It's the uh, contractor confirmation ticket. And it's very important because now a contractor, he's either using the web or uh, he still might still be calling in, but he has a very strong obligation. He gets this confirmation ticket back by email very quickly. And he's obligated to look at that and say, did I put the accurate information. We now have a mapping tool that he can draw on the map the limits of his work site. And he still has to give a description too, a verbal description on the, in the various fields. So he's obligated to look at that and make sure that he sent any accurate information to call before you dig, and then we transmit it to all the utilities that are located within his work site. So he's, he's got to look at that and say, you know, is this accurate? He, down the bottom, he gets a list of utilities that have been notified and their phone numbers. You know, the contractor has an obligation. He has to, when he, before he puts that shovel on the ground, he looks at this list 
you know, he sees Eversource on there, he sees uh, Frontier. If they didn't mark out, he's got to call them up. He's got to be smart. He's got to use good judgment. So the, the ticket is very, um, this confirmation ticket is very valuable in my opinion. So how does that affect the, uh, your industry? So utility is obligated by state regulations to mark out their facilities. And that raises some complications with WPCAs, which we'll get into more. But um, so when you own the WPCA, you gotta mark your trunk line and NETs. And like I said, you guys are a very big player. And um, with all this technology that we're using, we can get much better data back. We can use the statistics to make improvements. And also it, we use it in our education programs. Where do we need to focus our education? So one of the statistics that, that Nick brought up was the fact that 38.3% of damages to, bury it, uh, to buried infrastructure in the US and Canada is caused by water and sewer related work. So you guys obviously are a major player. So this data came from the CGA, which is the Common Ground Alliance. They're the umbrella that they provide support and oversight to the one calls all across the United States. So with that, <clears throat> the water pollution control authorities need to take an active role in assisting contractors protecting all infrastructure. You know, the sewer uh, is typically the deepest. So what do you mean you gotta take an active role in helping everybody else out? I mean, if someone's going to work on your facility, they're encountering every other utility first to get to your facility. Whether it be a lateral or working on the main, they're gonna, they gotta work with everybody. So you guys are a key player. So in 2013, um, like Tom said, I've been on the board a long time, but back in 2013, the WPCA, or um, excuse me, the call before you dig recognized that we needed more interaction with, WP, with the WPCAs across Connecticut. We had utilities and contractors complaining to us all the time that, you know, they're hitting sewer laterals, they're not marked, and they felt that they weren't getting the cooperation they should be getting from the, the WPCA community. So we said, how do we address this? So we said, we, they, they're an important stakeholder. We gotta bring them to the table. So in 2013, we decided we needed a representative on the board. We reached out to the Greater New Haven WPCA and they put Rick Hurlberg's name forward. And uh, Rick has been a great asset to the board. Uh, Rick is very active on the damage prevention committee and um, very involved with all the discussions regarding uh, the WPCA issues in uh, the world of Call Before You Dig. So um, that's been a welcome asset to our board. And uh, so with that, so with that, um, once Rick was on the board, you know, we started talking about what improvements can be made. And uh, Rick started talking with Nick and Pelican Corp, our vendor, and uh, the discussions led to a new opportunity. And, and that's why we were asked to come today, is to discuss a little bit about that opportunity um, an improvement that the Greater New Haven WPCA took advantage of to, to help them with th their interaction with the one call system in Connecticut. So with that, I'll let Nick explain a little bit more about that system. <coughs> um, thanks, Derek. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, just talk closer. closer to it. All right. Right there, grab it. I'll turn this just around so I can see. <laughs> it's just easier to hold it, I guess. Um, so the key thing, um, damage prevention is all about communication. The whole purpose of Call Before You Dig is communication between uh, the contractor and the utility. So the contractor's obligation is to contact Call Before You Dig. The utility's obligation is to communicate with the contractor the location of the facilities. Now. With the work that we did with Call Before You Dig in the last 12 months, uh, probably uh, the emphasis that we were trying to work on, aside from all of the technology stuff that we're trying to do, is the world today is a, is a world of instant gratification. You, know, you want to you be able to do something and get an instant response back. The ongoing and historical challenge with Call Before You Dig is you submit your request, you, make, you do the right thing as a contractor, you are then obligated to wait your two days. And between that time, you may or may not hear anything from the utility. 
So it's an interesting challenge for the, for the contractor to sort of have this void of time when they probably are doing other things and not focused terribly much on, 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 on the, what's actually under the ground. But um, when we did this project for Call Before You Dig, uh, it started uh, engaging a number of conversations with Rick and the, and the guys at GNH WPCA around how they might improve, uh, if Call Before You Dig is improving its communications, how they might improve their communications with contractors about that. And while they're doing that, how do we make our own processes internally more efficient by only responding to the critical ones or really looking at the ticket detail and then responding to the tickets that uh, needed attention or required a particular type of communication with the contractor. And that effectively is what we're, what we're talking about today. Now, Tom's probably preached to you forever about the various dynamics of, of his organisation, but the, current, the challenges that they were facing was that CBYD ticket growth was expanding, their resource pool wasn't expanding, in fact it was probably going the other way in some regards. Um, and when they received a ticket, the problem was well, which part of their facility was actually impacted by this? What was the significance of this ticket in relation to what, you know, what am I meant to do with it? Is it, do I have to go out and market, roll a truck and then find that there's really nothing there and all I could have said to the, to the, to the, to the contractor is there's a manhole in the middle of the road, you know, there's another manhole probably 50 feet up in the middle of the road and there, from there go the T marks. Um, in addition to that, because Call Before You Dig is 24 hours, you, most of your operations may not be 24 hours. So uh, you'll be receiving tickets all through the night for, for various activities from, from contractors. So there needed to be a way of dealing with that. Um, before this work, Tom's team or uh, Rick's team effectively had somewhere in the vicinity of three, uh, five people, two people in-house doing administrative functions, looking up the tickets, looking up the GIS system, talking to the contractors, um, creating work orders for, them to, for, the, for the work to be sent out to the field. All of this manual intervention required something in the order of um, two people uh, at best, at worst even, uh, to support that. And then you had the people in the vehicles in the field. So these guys, I'm assuming they're um, somewhat similar to you. They're not dedicated locate team, they're, they're your you know, they're the guys that actually work on the facility. They know where it is because they, they, uh, they work on it all the time. So they just happen to get the, the training on the locate and they have to go out and do that locate marking as well. So they receive the work order, they then look up the GIS and then they go and physically mark out those tickets. So it's a very labour intensive um, process that, uh, that they've historically done and most utilities do it the same way. We worked with them to try and automate as many of those repeatable processes as we could. And we did it simply through working with the various systems that Greater New Haven had, their GIS system, their um, uh, historical, I guess, data that Rick and his team could give us around how we would automate and predict which tickets would impact <coughs> what type of facility and therefore how we would formulate a, a response to the contractor that indicated what it was, and that response was instant. Within five minutes of a ticket being created at Call Before You Dig, the contractor working around the GNH facility would receive a response that told them the facility that they found that could be impacted by that work. Now, forget about the I'm just about to break ground activity for that. The other implications for that is within five or ten minutes, that contractor was able to determine whether. Uh, the design that he'd been given by the engineering company or some other you know, work that they, they might have might have significant impact to that rather than sort of waiting the two days. So there's sort of a, the, the contractor was, ad, was advantaged by having that information earlier in the piece. Um, so do, getting that communication out to the contractor now doesn't require two people and even to the locators as well. It doesn't require two people, it requires one person and that's probably a a high estimate, it's probably more like half a person now. So Rick's team's got a lot more capacity to support growth and also focus on probably the things that uh, are to some extent more important within his organisation. Um, 
And because we're able to do that and because we're able to figure out which tickets are impacting what part of their facility, whether it's a, um, a forced main or a gravity fed main or in fact whether there's no impact to their infrastructure at all, we're also able to um, reduce the number of tickets we actually need to send out to the field. So with the area that Greater New Haven covers, reasonably extensive within the, within the uh, context of Connecticut, they've gone from having three guys required in the field to now only one. And now there's a significant efficiency that they gain from that, from their own business. So each response that the contractor gets is different depending on where they're working and the type of activity that they're conducting around those facilities as well. So if they're, de if they're dealing with um, activities that are milling and paving, you know, we can put a different risk rating against that. If they're doing deep digging activities, then again, we can make different decisions based on that as well. But the primary decision maker is, do we have facility and what type of facility do we have? And in this case, we've gone with the street light principle. If we've got no facilities, the contractor gets a letter with a big green street light on it saying, you know, from our perspective, you're good to go. But it also provides more detail. I'll show you the exact letters that we ship um, uh, shortly. But similarly, if we find uh, normal, just a run-of-the-mill gravity-fed facility, then we send a caution letter. You know, here it is. Be careful. Here's the contact numbers to follow. Here's the procedures to follow around that and Greater New Haven will work with a contractor as to whether that facility does or does not need to be located. Uh, conversely to that, if the facility is force main, obviously they'll send a, definitely send a locator in every case because um, that's a pretty devastating environmental problem uh, if that is broken. So each one is categorised based on that risk. This is what a uh, this is what a forced main response looked like. So the contractor gets a letter, clear, clear instructions from here. They also get the, 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 uh, the GIS plot as well. So they get to see the area that they've nominated at Call Before You Dig. Probably one of the things I didn't, we didn't sort of explain at the, the Call Before You Dig piece was contractors are now drawing on a map at Call Before You Dig to say this is where we're working. They physically locate on a on a Google-like map and draw and say, this is the extent of my work. So we can then drop that extent straight on to, to Greater New Haven's GIS plot and say, well, this is the, it's the area that they're working <coughs> and this is what is potentially impacted. Similarly, this is a, uh, a gravity fed. So the gravity fed is highlighted in green. The work area is highlighted in the, the dotted red and a corresponding letter for that. And similarly, all clear. A decision that um, Greater New Haven could make and did make was in their GIS they had the uh, service connections, so the laterals plotted. For not everywhere, but for the most part they had a fairly reasonable co uh, coverage of, of laterals. And that uh, is added to the maps when we have that. Now that's really useful information. One of the, a big problem that's happening nationally not just in the US but also outside the US as well as cross bores. You know, a lot of, lot of directional boring by gas companies, telecommunication companies is just popping sewer laterals all over the place. Um, and by presenting the laterals on the plots that the, the contractor gets that they wouldn't normally have got a mark for. So I get the fact that you don't necessarily own the sewer lateral Greater New Haven doesn't own the sewer lateral, but they're responsible for a pair of the sewer lateral. So you're better off getting ahead of the game, in their view, rather than defending uh, or repairing the asset after the fact. So they took that position. So in their case, it was really a win-win. The contractor got significantly better communications from the utility about the presence of the facilities, the nature of the facilities, any particular procedures that needed to be followed outside of what the normal Connecticut regulations might suggest. Um, but then along the way, Greater New Haven got a significant ele element of efficiency and also an ability to then sort of categorise each ticket and understand the nature of it rather than just sort of, you know, I think 
it was a sort of a statement or um, uh, an interpretation I made of an earlier presentation about uh, perspective. And, and so the perspective here is rather than sitting in the forest cutting down the trees, Greater New Haven took, took a broader view and had a look at what was happening, what the operation were and how they was, was, was working and then how they could make strategic changes to make their own organisation a bit more efficient in this space and create, I guess, a, a much better communication process for the, for the contractors. Um, and essentially that's it. I mean, it's, there's, there's some technology behind it, but the technology piece is probably the least interesting. <laughs> Um, it's probably more interesting for me than perhaps for some of you others, but, um, but that's the net result that we got. It's pretty exciting. We were pretty happy to do this and um, outside of the US we've done this type of work quite a lot. So it was kind of great to be able to do this um, in Connecticut. That's all I have. Is, it, is there questions, Tom? Or No. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. I'd like to add a little bit to that. Thank you very much, you guys. Um, I actually went to the board with this um, as a, a as a topic, and I don't know. I mean, you guys did a great job presenting. It really comes down. It's very simple. When, when you have sewers, and I thought this would be really useful for a lot of the WPCAs in the state of Connecticut. We're required to mark. You know, in call before you dig, if you're any kind of utility, you're required to mark it out. That's your responsibility. When your sewers, if you have a repeating pattern of, of something on the surface, which is a manhole, you can get away with not marking it out. However, that's not really, the contractors don't really like that. So this is providing an answer to that solution. There's the green that says there's nothing there, which is nice. They get to know that right away. There's the yellow that says, yes, there's gravity sewers in the area. Well, we don't just say there's gravity sewers. We give them a map. We give them as much information as we can, and they have that as a tool out there so they don't damage our facilities. They can see it on the ground. They can see the manholes. The most important part is we have force mains that are 36-inch diameter that, that, you know, that uh, conveys 30 million gallons of sewage a day. This system makes sure that those force mains get marked out in addition to all the small force mains. So it really covers us all and that means that, and you can see by the way those guys describe, it's a huge reduction in workforce for the WPCA and it dovetails perfectly into the program that uh, Derek Brown and, and his committee has put together as the backbone of Call Before You Dig in the state of Connecticut. So it's a huge resource. It was put together in a very short period of time, I'd say maybe six months, Rick, I think, between the concept to the end, working with my GIS, GIS guy, Ricardo Sabalos, in-house in engineering, working with Rick's guys, and um, very quick, and I can tell you right now, you can get into the details of it, it was a very low-cost, low efficient um, uh, cost to the authority, so um, that's, a, that's all I like to say on that. And uh, if you have any questions, um, you can even see Rick there. You can ask questions on it.